Okay, good morning everyone. Okay, we'll continue with our book reading this morning, Toyota Way to Service Excellence by Jeffrey K. Laika and Karen Roth. And we're in chapter six. Still looking at macro level people principle. Yesterday we started from principle eleven. We said develop a deliberate culture and we looked at the role of national culture using the Western and the Asian continent or country as an example. Today on page 244, we're looking at the role of organizational culture. The role of organizational culture. So organizations are said to have their own culture, to some degree, independent of the national culture. Toyota Toyota's culture is reflected in the artifact of the Toyota Way 200, 2001 house. The purpose is contributing to society and customers, which in turn, which in turn will lead to revenue to sustain the economic well-being of the company. The people at Toyota value both respect for people and continuous improvement and believe this is the only true part of sustainable growth. The belief challenge Kaizen, Go and See firsthand, teamwork and respect are the way to develop people so that they can meet the many challenges thrown at them by a complex and sometimes even hostile world. These values and beliefs in Japan are all supported by the collectivism, collectivism culture long-term thinking and a desire to avoid uncertainty by controlling whatever it is possible to control. Since Toyota considers culture the source of its comparative advantage, the company is devoted to building its culture any place it sets up shop. Accepting that its culture was peculiar to Japan, and could not be established in other countries would have meant giving up. And that would have meant that the Toyota could not become a global company. Therefore, the company accepted the challenge of developing the Toyota way throughout the world. For the most part of it for the, for the most part it has succeeded. However, through working hard, experimenting learning and above all persevering a pivotal learning point was at NUMMI the joint venture between Toyota and General Motors in California Toyota set up the joint venture for the purpose of learning how to establish its culture with Americans if it could do it in the United States it could do it anywhere the company did not leave the culture to chance, but invested heavily in the NUMMI in order to learn. The people at Toyota carefully selected American managers who seemed to fit Toyota's culture, intensely socializing, intensely socialized them first in Japan and then at NUMMI by sending over a Japanese coordinator for every executive and manager and Japanese trainee trainers for group leaders and team leaders. The mentors coached daily and Japanese coordinators called the parent company in Japan every night to report on what they had learned. They did not try to transfer every aspect of their culture in Japan. Adapting some, adapting some aspects to local culture. When they got resistance, they reflected and tried to understand the costs and the experiments with the varieties of countermeasures. Again, this was one on one mentoring of all the leaders for years. One senior Japanese leader explained that his biggest challenge was establishing a culture of openly discussing problems. At first, he would do what he was used to doing in Japan, which is ask everyone he was coaching, 
what is the problem. Americans responded defensively, even with hostility. Are you saying I have a problem? He would explain that we all have problems, and by addressing them, that is how we improve. No luck. After deep reflection and some tutoring by the American leaders, the Japanese mentors concluded that they needed to say two to three positive things before bringing up a problem that would be viewed as negative. It worked for a while, and eventually enough trust was built to openly discuss problem. Today, Toyota persistence paid off. NUMMI became the best automobile motive plants in North America, comparable to Toyota's plants in Japan, on key performance of its own plant in Georgetown, Kentucky. Every plant, every sales office, every technical center was launched with a strong focus on building Toyota way culture. It was not 100% though. Some Americans got it, others not so much. Developing Toyota culture was most successful in manufacturing and product development, but there was something distinctively Toyota-like in all parts of the company. Toyota's experiences support the hypothesis that organizational culture can be sustained globally through persistent efforts and learning. The best learning is direct one-on-one -on -one with a coach. Classroom training simply does not work to develop the right daily habit. Okay, this is where we'll stop from our reading this morning. Talking about organizational culture. Yesterday, we looked at the role of national culture. And today, we're looking at the role of organizational culture. So, every organization has his or her own uh culture with some degree of um, independence so the purpose of all this culture is one to contribute to the society and also to contribute to customers which in turn would lead to revenue and also sustain the economic uh, well economic well-being of the company so the people at toyota their own culture is they that believe they believe in continuous improvement, they believe in respecting them um, people, they believe in sustainable growth. So the more they develop, the more they learn, the more they dig out problems and solve problems, the more they continue to learn. So organizational culture has a very, very important role to play in the lives of people, to play in the lives of the society, to play in the life of the company and also play nationally like in the life of uh, the country's well-being and also economy Kali. so that's just a brief reading of um, where we started this morning the role of an um, organizational culture tomorrow on page 245 we're we'll looking at build a deliberate culture and then find people who fit in it so this is your stop for our reading this morning thank you